So Bruce Wayne, Batman, even though technically he is just a normal man, he has shown time and time again that with the right resources and prep time, he can contend with even the strongest beings in his universe. But what if you took all of that away? What if you took away his resources, his time to plan and prepare, and placed him in a situation where no normal man should make it out of? Well, that's exactly what we are going to find out. What if Batman was stranded in space, in a completely different galaxy? Well, my name is AJ, and let's get into it. So we immediately pick up in outer space, in somewhere named the Slag Galaxy. Now, just to give you a little reference on how far this is from Earth, it is said where this galaxy is, is eight megaparsecs away. And our solar system is only three light years wide, and one singular megaparsec is three million light years. And where Batman is, is eight of them. So yeah, it seems Batman isn't getting home anytime soon. But as we see this giant ship, which it is later revealed to be the War Storm, captures and brings in Batman's tiny ship in comparison, we then see two masked soldiers break in the door and barge in. And as they are finally inside, they start to look around and question the ship and even make fun of it in a way, saying, look at these controls. It's actually got a little steering wheel that you steer with your hands. Very basic and rudimentary. Even the engines burned out. However far this thing flew was a lot farther than it was ever meant to, clearly hinting at some kind of mystery of why Batman is even here in a distant galaxy in the first place, which we actually get some clues on a little bit later on. But then we see the soldiers, after confirming that there's no airborne gases or anything poisonous, take off their mask which we see two completely alien looking figures as they continue on their little hunt for whoever was steering this ship. But unknown to them, as they are trying to hunt somebody, they are the ones being hunted. As we cut over our perspective to someone hiding in the shadows above, Batman. And as he monologues and thinks to himself, he says, two aliens of a sort I have never even seen before. I have no idea as to what their pressure points or pain centers, but they have faces and we can start there. As immediately Batman jumps down, covering the battlefield with smoke. But again, he is not on his A game as he thinks to himself that the artificial gravity is throwing him off. He feels too sluggish and weightless at the same time. Even his batarangs do not fly right and he can't even catch his breath. Everything about this place is screaming at him that he just doesn't belong here. But of course, being as he is, Batman is able to take out some of the soldiers. As we then cut over to the captain of the war storm, Captain Cyan, a mean looking alien. And as they hear the reports of the soldiers being taken out by this mysterious creature, he says, sounds like we fished ourselves an exuberant recruit. Where is this alien now? And after finding out Batman's location on their big ship, he decides instead of sending more soldiers in to now send in the robots as they cannot lose any more flesh and blood. And now, as these alien-built robots start to enter the battlefield, it seems even them are not spared from Batman's rampage. As after picking up an alien weaponry that resembles a chainsaw, he starts chopping them in half. Even these bots are no match for the bat. But unfortunately, as Batman keeps progressing, he now fully captures the attention of Captain Cyan, because he then orders to send a squad of Firestormers to hold the perimeter as he decides to step in personally. And as they arrive, Batman is finally overwhelmed as he even points out himself saying out of my element, way out with little to no intel to go on, looking for answers to questions that I don't even know how to ask. As the Firestormers then get in position, trapping him in a corner as Batman is currently at a standstill. But just then, the two original soldiers that he attacked come back for round two, with Batman even making mental note of this, saying the batarangs that he attacked them with would have kept a full grown human down for an hour at least, but the only one that is human here is me. And as the smoke clears, they finally see in full picture what Batman is. Even a few of them chuckle, as they have never even seen a bat before. And one of the coldest lines throughout this comic, Batman says they don't know to fear the Batman, not yet. But before anyone can even lay another finger on him, suddenly Captain Cyan arrives, saying nobody touch him, this alien is mine, as they now stand face to face. With Batman showing absolutely no fear, even though he is technically way over his head in a situation that he doesn't even know how he's in. As the captain stares him down, saying, really? You are what all this trouble is about? What even are you? But of course, this was a rhetorical question. As the captain then goes on to say, you're right, I really don't care. I was just giving you a chance to strike me first. Show me why you deserve to scrub the toilets on my warship. 
as Batman takes this disrespect personally, activating his shock gloves, punching him across the face. And as it connects and fully does damage, as the electricity clears, we see the captain do nothing but laugh. Before on the immediate next page, we see Batman on the floor covered with blood in a cell, meaning he lost the fight almost immediately, with him even waking up trying to remember the events, saying, I have hit him with a 10,000 volt punch, and he didn't even flinch. He only hit me three times, but only two I can remember. The first punch broke four ribs, dislocated my right hip. The second one shattered my nose and cracked my orbital bone. I'm surprised the third one didn't straight up kill me. Just going on to say how outmatched Batman is, that even at his best right now, he couldn't even hope to tickle the captain, let alone take him in a fight and escape, as he is now a prisoner of this war storm. But as he is finally able to get to his feet, he is surrounded by all the other aliens and prisoners of this ship. But as he gets up, putting his fist up, ready to defend himself once more, he is surprised to see as somebody new enters the room. And as it turns out, this somebody is none other than a Tamaranian. Now, if you know anything about DC lore, you would know that Tamaranians are the same species that Starfire and her sister Blackfire are, meaning they are pretty powerful aliens. And this is even evident as when she rolls up, she stops all the other inmates and people from ganging up on Batman, showing that she is pretty tough and none of them really want a fight with her. But as she turns to talk with Batman, Batman then questions, where did you learn English? As he can understand her pretty perfectly. But as it turns out when he was unconscious, the Stormers embedded him with a lingo chip, basically a generic chip that can let everybody understand everybody else. And as Batman immediately goes to check his bat suit for any weapons, it turns out that also while he was unconscious, the probe droids dismantled and took away any weaponry or any hidden stashes he might've had. But why leave him with his bat suit you may ask? Well, they left him his pretend wings as their idea as a joke, as they really don't get much for laughs on board this ship. But of course, this is a big mistake, as if you leave Batman with even a crumb, he is resourceful enough to learn to take that crumb and make a full cookie out of it. And as we will see, this bat suit comes really in handy later. But moving on, we see this unnamed Tamaranian then get serious for a second, saying, listen up, you're locked up with the rejects. And once you don't cut it to be a war stormer, they only keep you around until they need some poor soul to shovel the asteroids out of their turbines. So if you want to live to see another starlight again, be ready to move on my signal. And what does Batman do with this new breakout information? Well, he says, not interested as he wants to gather as much information as he can about this ship and even where he is before he makes any hasty decisions with an escape plan. Anyways, moving on, we then get a little bit of a lore drop with Batman saying it's been six weeks since Wayne Enterprises purchased a prototype long range shuttle from Star Labs under the guise of developing a commercial spaceflight business. He paid $532 million for a one way trip, but he had no choice. And why did he have no choice? Well, it's not explicitly stated and just leaves to be a little bit of a mystery until we can find more information. And what about this entire ship that they are on? Well, it is explained that the ship, named the Warstorm, is surrounded by an artificially generated stellar hurricane, keeping it impenetrable, but also inescapable. It travels the galaxy abducting any able-bodied being it finds, forcing them to train as mercenary soldiers. It even goes on to say in the Slag Galaxy, most resources are reserved for the mining industries. That means weapons and guns and ships are precious, while flesh and people are cheap. So the war stormers are trained to kill with their bare hands. They perfect their killing blows with the help of training robots. And why is this all important? Well, because Batman, due to being a human, is physically weak and not as strong as some of the aliens, he is not fit to be a mercenary or a war stormer. So he is put on cleanup duty, basically being the ship's janitor, cleaning up and recycling the bots that are damaged from training. But he then secretly decides to keep one, as the bots do have some sort of AI allowing them to talk and communicate and understand questions. And of course, after taking the bot, Batman wants to know answers about the captain, Captain Cyan. But before the bot is able to, we see the same Tamaranian from earlier come forward in her cell, answering it for him, saying Cyan is as tough as any one of his species. He's making a fortune selling the Stormers to the Black Sun Mining Company. So if you had any hopes of bribing him, you are out of luck. Believe me, I have tried. But of course, just then the Tamaranian switches the questions onto Batman saying, I've been watching you, you know. The others, they laugh at you, the flightless bird. But I see the guards, 
they beat on you for fun, but you take it like they're doing you a favor. While they're using your face for knuckle practice, somehow it's like you're the one who's training. With her continuing to say, I'd wager this is your first time ever setting foot off of your little world, yet you would come all the way here to the slag galaxy looking for a fight. No way a man like you only does something that stupid, but for one explanation. You're in love. You want to survive the war storm. You think on that love of yours every picosecond that you're trapped here. Think about crawling your way back to your lover's arms and maybe that'll keep you alive. Tell me, does this lover have themselves a name? And while this Tamaranian might be thinking of a person or even a thing, to Batman, this one love that he is fighting so hard to get back to is not a person or a thing, but a place, none other than Gotham City. The one place Batman has spent the most time in blood, sweat, and tears to protect. And with this almost dreamlike sequence of him back in his city, he says that he has fought madmen and monsters. He has faced being so superhumanly strong that it defies all mortal reckoning. Now that they're all behind bars or crackling in Arkham, he has traveled the earth for years to prepare himself for this, to be all that Gotham needs. But he has only traveled the earth, one planet in a cosmos teeming with perils. Only now does he see what a small-minded fool he has been. With Batman then realizing how insignificantly small of a fish in a unfathomably large pond he really is in the grand scheme of things. Hinting that he went on this trip on purpose because he has mastered everything he could on Earth to protect Gotham and naturally what is the next step but to move away from Earth to more alien settings. To challenge himself even more. Which I mean if true is definitely an interesting way of thinking and characterizing this Batman. But of course as he moved over back into the real world with Batman back on the war storm we see him in full training mode. After patching back up the punch bot he now orders it not to just tell him how they fight but to show him. Fight him how they would fight. First the species that the captain is, then every other alien species in the robot's database. With Batman monologuing in his head, explaining his ideals even further, saying it is a big universe, one that he knows nothing about, and whatever threats they are spread across the heavens, and sooner or later they will find themselves to Gotham. And he is not ready to face those threats, not a single one of them. He is not anywhere close, not yet. As we see Batman with a determined look on his face, as he's in his life or death situation, and of course, Batman chooses life. But that is all as his issue comes to a close. So yeah, what did you guys think about this story? Me for one, I actually really enjoyed this, as you really don't see Batman in space or on alien planets as much, and if you do, he is usually with the Justice League or other space-faring superheroes, but here he is completely alone by himself. And this seems to be an alternate universe, as these are his first aliens he is encountering. Nor does it seem like he has the help of other spacefaring superheroes such as Green Lantern or otherwise. But of course, if you enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like or even subscribe, as your engagement goes a long way. As always, thank you for watching.